the Star Wars Blu-rays have finally landed, and the online face of StarWars.com gets a facelift. It's Wednesday, September 21st, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. After months or even years of waiting, the Star Wars trilogies were finally released on Blu-ray disc last Friday. While no hard sales figures have yet been released, it is, at the time of this recording, the highest-selling Blu-ray disc on Amazon.com, despite its hefty price tag. And while the controversy and tumult over the additions and changes to both original and prequel trilogies, as discussed in the previous episode of This Week in Star Wars, continues to this day, and seems to color almost every review of the discs, those reviews which confine themselves to the audio and visual aspects of the Blu-ray presentation seem uniformly to be quite positive. The best and seemingly most knowledgeable of these reviews is available on thedigitalbits.com, a link to which is available on the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page. While many fans wondered if Lucasfilm would include any hidden content Easter eggs within the Blu-rays, it was quickly learned that one of the more requested nuggets from the Lucas Archive, the animated debut of Boba Fett from the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special, was not technically hidden, but was certainly buried deep within the bonus content for the original trilogies. Of course, this marks the first time that any portion of the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special has been officially released by Lucasfilm. The Blu-ray release was presaged earlier in the week by a total redesign of StarWars.com. The official website, which launched in 1996, has gone through periodic facelifts, but had remained largely unchanged since the prequel era. According to an introductory statement on the website itself, the new focus of StarWars.com will be visual presentation, games, and other entertainment. News and reference materials, which, while still available in limited form on StarWars.com, will also be available through links to other sites. Perhaps it goes without saying, examples and information about the change are available on StarWars.com. Me? I'm a collecting fool. This week's collecting news centers largely around Hasbro, who announced that this year, for the first time, they will be having an official presence at the New York City Comic Con, which will run on October 13th through the 16th at the Javits Center in Manhattan. In addition to their booth on the showroom floor, the 800-pound gorilla of Star Wars licensing will be hosting a Hasbro Star Wars panel during the con, a la San Diego Comic-Con or New York Toy Fair, which will supplement a number of other Star Wars-related panels by authors, artists, video game designers, and collectors. And while there has been no official confirmation, informed internet discussion seems to indicate that Hasbro may even have an exclusive at the con. In addition to the aforementioned panels, numerous Star Wars guests will be appearing at the New York Comic Con, including Mark Hamill, The Clone Wars Actually Eckstein, Peter Mayhew, as well as Star Wars artist and unofficial official artist of This Week in Star Wars, Katie Cook. Stay tuned to This Week in Star Wars for more details as the mid-October event approaches. One piece of news that we were given prior to the Comic-Con panel was the demise of the Saga Legends line. Originally introduced in 2007 as the greatest hits analog to the 30th anniversary collection, the Saga Legends line has consisted primarily of repacks and repaints of popular characters from all six films, as well as the occasional Expanded Universe figure. In a question and answer session with Star Wars Action News, Hasbro revealed that this line will come to an end at the end of 2011 and will be replaced by a new line called Movie Heroes. While this may turn out to simply be a functional extension of the Saga Legends line, we are given to understand that at least some of the Phantom Menace figures, launched in conjunction with next year's 3D re-release of that film, will be contained in the Movie Heroes line. 
If that's not enough Hasbro confusion for you, let's talk about prototype Boba Fett mail-aways. You know what's going on? Visitors to the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page saw last week a link to Hasbro's website which contained a downloadable prototype Boba Fett mail-away form. Hey, Boba Fett! As is standard practice with Hasbro mail-away redemptions, the form called for the inclusion of five UPCs from Hasbro Star Wars figures. However, this version of the form contained no restrictions as to which assortments those figures could be from, and in fact stated that any UPCs would be acceptable. Likewise, the plain language of the form indicated that this downloadable form was in fact sufficient for inclusion with your submission. Almost immediately, Sweet Lady H began backpedaling and posted a new form which called for the inclusion of UPCs only from specific, i.e. currently shipping, waves of Star Wars figures. This deal is getting worse all the time. While not entirely unexpected, before collectors were even able to adjust to these new revised rules, a second revision of the form was posted. It just isn't fair. Which contained a watermark stating that the online form was in fact a sample and not valid for redemption. Collector site yakface.com curied Hasbro about just what would and would not be accepted for prototype FET redemptions. And in response, Hasbro stated that submissions made up to that point and conforming with the earlier stated rules of the redemption policy would be honored. But from that point going forward, submissions would have to be on an original form included with a newly purchased figure and contain UPCs from the currently shipping lines. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Full details are available, of course, on the yakface.com website, as well as the Hasbro website. While new figures containing an original redemption form for the prototype FET have yet to start hitting shelves, Hasbro, it seems, is making it easier for that to eventually happen. Numerous collecting sites and reports and forums from across the country indicate that Hasbro is pulling numerous peg-warming figures from the earlier waves of the vintage collection. Many fans have been complaining that figures such as Dengar, Cloudcar Pilot, and the Sand Trooper have been clogging pegs since almost the new year and preclude new figures from reaching the floor. Finally, apparently, Hasbro has listened to these complaints and is making it easier on retailers to put new product out in anticipation, no doubt, in part to the upcoming holiday season. According to these online reports, the purges are taking place at two of the most suffering franchises, Target and Walmart. Details are available at yakface.com as well as Jedi Temple Archives. Quick on the heels of their exclusive Episode 3 Obi-Wan Kenobi mini-bust, online retailer Entertainment Earth has put up for pre-order a new Gentle Giant exclusive product. This time it is a Leia in Boosh disguise maquette. It is limited to 1,000 pieces, is expected to be released in February of next year, and is retailing for one cent shy of $80. Lucasfilm has joined with Stand Up to Cancer to create a number of public awareness spots featuring celebrities such as Zach Galifianakis, Seth Rogen, Andy Samberg, Ken Young, Ed Helms, Jamie King, Emma Stone, Samuel L. Jackson, and Bill Hader, among others, which urge viewers to use the force for good. A t-shirt is available in support of the program at the Stand Up to Cancer website, and Lucasfilm has made available a number of items from the Lucasfilm archives for auction on eBay. The proceeds of these sales will go to the Use the Force for Good program and include such items as a Volkswagen Passat, dinner with George Lucas himself, Star Wars guitars, books, posters, high-end collectibles, and many other items. These auctions are scheduled to end on Friday, so go to eBay and search Use the Force for Good and see just what is available. The t-shirts themselves, three of which are available, one featuring Luke and Leia, one with Yoda, and one with a Stormtrooper, are available as mentioned at the Stand Up to Cancer shop, a link to which is provided at the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page. New at your local comic shop last week were Star Wars Invasion Revelations number 3, as well as the Old Republic Lost Sons penultimate issue number 4. 
This week sees the release of Star Wars Jedi, The Dark Side, number five, Knight Errant, number seven, and allegedly the Star Wars episodes one through six comic adaptation Omnibus. While many of you were watching your Star Wars Blu-rays last Friday, the season four of The Clone Wars premiered on the Cartoon Network. The third episode is on this Friday. It is entitled Prisoners and tells the story of Ahsoka trying to rally the population of Mon Calamari against the Separatist invaders. Lastly this week, photos were released of a Lucasfilm production facility which is being built in Singapore. The design is an inspired modern smooth glass version of a Jawa sand crawler and actually looks really cool. A link to the article as well as a photograph are available on our Facebook page. So now with the Blu-rays, we've finally got all those deleted scenes we've been waiting all this time to see. I was struck by a number of things, and I'll go over them in no particular order. First, the fact that the deleted scenes for the prequel trilogies consisted primarily of basically CGI storyboards, whereas the deleted scenes for the original trilogy were actually filmed scenes with actors. Just sort of indicates how much the whole industry has changed. Second, the lack of music is almost disturbing, especially in the live action scenes. It just sort of emphasizes the fact that they're not finished. And then there's the fact that despite some of them being actually kind of good, I don't think any of them would have actually improved any of the films that they should have been in. The scene we saw at Celebration 5 where Vader tries to commune with Luke as he finishes building his lightsaber in Tatooine is cool, but it doesn't really add that much. I had always personally really wanted to see the Wampa attack on Echo Base, but now that I've seen the deleted scenes, it doesn't seem to be that great. The same with the attack on the droid ship in Episode 2. Now that I've seen them, the interesting thing will be, how long will it be before I feel the need to see them again? And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit our website, www.thisweekinstarwars.com, or if you're in a hurry, www.twisw.com. There you can find past episodes, links to some of the stories we discussed, as well as photo galleries and other interesting Star Wars-related tidbits. You can also find links to the other realms of the This Week in Star Wars media empire, including our Breaking News Twitter feed, our Facebook page, as well as links to email addresses where you can contact the show. If you have questions or comments or news suggestions, we encourage you to contact us at host at thisweekinstarwars.com. Help us grow the community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive review at iTunes. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respected trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. Perhaps you think you're being treated unfairly? Mm -hmm.